Morning everyone. Welcome to Road Road Restore. I'm John. Okay then, so in this video we will be checking over the bottom ends of the CBR1000F. Uh, we've got two engines stripped down and we will be checking all the bottom end parts and trying to salvage the best parts to make one good engine. So without further ado, let's <coughs> do it. Okay then, so here's one suspicious thing I have found. Uh, the alternator fits in here so that is obviously the alternator bearing and it feels pretty notchy try to turn it it's pretty hard to turn from underneath because you can't really get your fingers in there let me try it from this side see if you can you see it's pretty notchy and notched up so we're going to have to try and get that out. But luckily I have dug the spare one out of the shed. This is off the other engine. This is out of the original engine. That feels pretty good. So looks like we're in luck. So we can work out how to get this one out. I don't know how I got that one out, I'm sure. I can't remember. Probably over a year ago when I took it out. But it's certainly not pulling out with my finger, so we're going to have to try and get on the other side and put a drift on it or something. So hopefully you can see that in there. I'm going to try and drift that out somehow. So that's got to fit in there. It's got to tap that with the other end of the hammer. The upper end of the hammer. Ooh. <laughs> Straight out. So, here she is. Oh yes, that does feel pretty mashed up. I'd even turn that way. That's it, it's going. Ah, no wonder. So it's turning now. Uh, so that looks pretty mashed up on the back. Uh, turning pretty freely, but on my finger I can feel it dragging. Yeah, definitely feel it dragging. I don't know if you can hear it. Where's my microphone? Let me put you up a bit. The microphone's just there in my pocket. I don't know if you're going to wear it, but... Sounds pretty notchy. But uh, when I was a young lad, when I'd just left school, I was an apprentice at a gearbox reconditioning place. It's just like a little shop reconditioning gearboxes. The old box, all Vivas and the old Cortinas. And the lad who was learning me just hold the bearings up to the light and you can actually I know you're not going to be able to see it on the camera but but just in there where the bearings spin round you can see the metal and you can see it's all pitted and all grooved if you give them a spin but all we into the light and yes you can see that this one is all pitted and not that you're going to be able to see it, I don't think. But I can definitely see it, so that is definitely for the bin. But luckily, we have the other one. Let me stick you up there. If we can get it off. <laughs> Got to get the dot off. So that's bit it. Yes, I 
don't think it's going to be as easy as it seemed at the first because I don't think I've undone this knot and the old lot's just come out of the casing so surely I would have undone that to get the thing out of the casing why is that so tight? put that there put that there Is that so tight? I'll have to try and put some on there to hold it. Oh, I've got to get that bloody bearing. I need that bearing. Even if I cut through that with the angle grinder. <laughs> Drastic. Uh, could be put round it. We just wrap some up around there. Got to get this bearing off there, no matter what. Come on, baby. Oh man, that's on there tight. Ah, uh, hello. A rattle gun, ain't I? Where is it? There it is. Pull those off. Aha, perfect. Undo. Please undo. Come on. Bloody ripper, mate. Gonna come off. <laughs> yes, that one feels perfect. That one feels like shite. And that one feels perfect. Nice and smooth. So get rid of that one before we get it in the way. Put this back in the engine casing. Hopefully you can see down there. <coughs> Plonk this bearing in there. You can't see much with my hand in the way, I know, but is that gonna go in there? going in here if I rock it from side to side let me just get the wooden mallet bit which is nice and clean let's get from side to side it seems to be working yes, that best appears to be it in fully let's just start making the noise So yes, that feels a lot better. So hopefully that's one replacement part done without spending a penny. Okay, next. Okay then, so main crankshaft check. It says check all the cogs to make sure that all the cogs are okay. Ah! Don't rub over your finger because it hurts. Yes, all the cogs seem to be okay. Check all the bearing mating surfaces and they seem to be okay. Uh, I think it was this one. On my last video it felt a bit weird, but now it feels okay. It's working pretty perfect. But I'm still going to undo this one and take it off. Yes, all these parts seem okay. Uh, obviously, we've checked all the uh, 
there should be some end float tip between these where you put your feeling gauge in. I think they're 0.05 or something like that. 0.05 to 0.25, something like that. But my feeling gauges have rusted and all the numbers have gone, so I'm waiting for some feeling gauges. But I think they're pretty okay. There's no movement up and down, which is the main thing, I'm sure. Same on all of them, no movement. So that all seems to be okay, but I'm going to whip that off. And just have a look in there. I did say that this was the one that had the rusty piston. But uh, looking back at the video, I'm not so sure. I think it might have been this one. Because that's the other end of the engine. That's that end. That's like cylinder one. And this is like cylinder four. This is what was the problem, cylinder four. So I'll have to check back on my videos just to uh, make myself clear on that. Anyway, I've got to take that off and have a quick look. Is that a 12 mil? Yep, that's a 12 mil. Let's just whack this off if we can. certainly look okay uh, yes that one certainly looks okay it's got a bit of discoloring on it but no brass or anything showing just put my super duper glasses on my super duper glasses two pairs at once Yes, that looks pretty good. Pretty fantastic. Yes. So now I've been moving that about. I've got to make sure I put it back on the right way, aren't I? Because I don't know which way it came off. Yes, that all seems to be pretty good. I'll leave that there for a minute. Give this a clean up and then come back to you when I'm going to put that back on and uh, hopefully found out the way it should go back on so bear with me while I clean that up ok then, so that's all that nice and cleaned up I've cleaned this up but I want to put some oil on it before I put it back so I've got my uh, a squirty can all cleaned up as well. So I'm going to pour some new engine oil into our squeezy gun, squirty gun, whatever you want to call it. Just pour some of that in there. Don't usually, don't overfill it, which is my usual trick. That should do for now. So it squirts up to the top. Uh, there we are. Nice new engine oil. Because 
don't want to squirt some on that. Don't want to squirt some on that. But uh, if you're a div like me, make sure you take note of which way round that came off because I didn't. But luckily for me, instead of checking all the way through the manual, I've got two. And uh, this is the one I've got to put back on. And so all we have to do is, there's no writing on this side. On this side there's a number two and it says MM5. So that's the same MN52, so we've got to put it back on that way. But uh, what about the bottom bits? Put my super duper glasses on. It says M5. And that says M5, but it's upside down, so that's got to go that way, and that's got to go that way. So. No, don't want to squirt that on there, do I? I've already done that. Let's get you down there a bit. Hopefully you can see. Put that under there so we don't get our table too greasy. Put a good dollop on that. On there with the lettering this way. Where's the other bit gone? And put the lettering on there so it reads this way as well. Let's whack that on there. Make sure there's no cloth stuck in between it. There we go. Put our little knots back on. screw them all the way up finger tight because you don't want to do any cross threading on these sort of things for definite especially if you've only got the original one I'm alright because I've got two of everything there we go then we have to go to our workshop manual and find out what the torque setting is OK then, so I found out in the book that the uh, torque range settings for these bolts are 26 foot pounds. which I think might be quite tight. Uh, that's that one. Click, click. Clunk, click every trip. that one. So that's back the way it was meant to be. Just feel a bit weird though, but probably because it's catching on that. Yes, that feels perfect. So I think that's that all checked. I don't think there's going to be any problems with putting this Oh, some people have no consideration, do they? That in the wrong why I'm trying to make a video. Yes, sir, I don't see why there's going to be any problem putting this back into the bike. That all looks all nice and hunky dory. So let's put that in a safe place for now. Yes, I okay, did. So I think that's about it for this video this week. Uh, next week's video. And then the next video, we will probably be checking these bearings, shell bearings, 
these are out the other engine that one is anyway now these ones turn out too good so anyway if you enjoyed the video please leave a thumbs up if you didn't enjoy the video just leave a thumbs down because they all help towards my channel I'd hope to get my videos pushed further up the line so more people can see them so yes yeah, stay well stay safe and I'll see you with this on the next one I see you in another light, brother.